taking some cattle down the road and these guys that drive by oh you're working in god's country and, and it's god's country until you have to get off the road and go do something and it can be miserable We've got satellite tools now that can measure biomass. How much grass are we growing? And once we get done grazing, how much are we leaving behind? We use a lot of one wire high tensile fencing and we can control the domestic animals to graze and then move on just like herds did here for, for thousands of years. In this area, whether it was elk or antelope or bison, there were herds here, and there were also pack hunting predators that kept animals moving. The landscape now is too fragmented for that type of approach, and so what we try and do is mimic that. The way this ranch works is with empowering people that care, and Cody cares. You know, I got my first horse when I was five, and we always had, you know, some cattle, this fat, and, and then had horses and stuff. And my first job, um, yeah, you know, my first job, um, you know, I had a ranch probably when I was 14. There's a lot more being able to take out of the box here. Dan has no issue with improving on what he has learned and implementing new techniques and and really focusing on making the ground in this place better than it was when, when he showed up. Grasslands can have a vital role in sequestering and storing carbon. And livestock really are the, are the last tool we have to, to manage that, that carbon and put it back in the soil. And there's, there's millions and millions of acres in the U.S. that isn't suitable for cropping. There's a, there's a good chunk of this ranch that you just couldn't do on a four-wheeler. So the horses are are one of the only tools, you know, to to be moving cattle in a lot of this country. And then dogs are just what saves horses life. Gathering some of this country, you'd go to through two or three horses or or accidentally kill some if you didn't have dogs to get cattle, you know, off of the brakes and the rim rocks. And oh baby. Come on, baby. Yeah, so they're dang sure are only ways in a lot of this country to, to do what you need to do. I've worked with other people that have come and helped me or that thought they wanted to do it and they can enjoy the riding part and, and all that romantic stuff you see in the movies, but things that, that you don't see, that kind of weeds out the people that really don't want to do it. It can, there can be some struggles there because you do have, you know, multiple days that are 16, 18 hour days and, and missing birthdays and, and, uh, and hopefully it, it pays off, you know, I mean, to raise the kids this way. Well, I wouldn't trade, trade it, you know, it's a, I, I could do other things, but this is what I always come back to. This landscape allowed us to manage in a way that we wanted to and show that good livestock management actually is good for soil health and wildlife. There seems to be a good relationship between livestock and wildlife. Cattle in these large, larger bunches go through an area, oftentimes we'll see the elk following them because what's left behind is stuff that's maybe more vegetative. It's a little bit greener. We try and participate with tools in terms of managing the elk herds as well. There's some management hunts here for cow elk and then bull hunts as well. The great thing about this community is the ranchers on the Zoom wall work together to manage those elk herds in a manner that's sustainable so that, so that we don't have so many elk that the resource is damaged and it's a pretty good system.